Um, obviously, uh, you you were calling for either this title shot or this interim title shot, but now that it's here, we're only a few days removed. You got the title shot that you wanted. What are the emotions now that camp's over? You're in the country. Yair is here. I know some people were nervous not seeing him on embedded for a bit that he might not even make it. Was there any part of you that was just nervous until you finally get into the octagon? Um, no, I'm, ha I'm having a great time. You know, I'm, I'm trying to live in the in the present, whereas I'm always looking ahead and always looking in the future, and I feel like I'm I'm never having fun. Um, but we we came out here early. We stayed in South Fremantle, and it's a it's a little beach town that's south of here. It, it's awesome. It's like we were going to the beach every day. We found some coffee shops, like great seafood. Um, the people are nothing but amazing and so kind, and um, just been trying to take it all in you know th this reminds me a lot of my UFC debut when I I took a, a fight on a five-day notice and in, in the Netherlands I flew across the world to Rotterdam took it all in first time really out of the country and that kicked off uh, my wife and I's um, I guess just travel bug you know like sure. becoming obsessed with it so this reminds me a lot of it and I'm trying to kind of go back and, and do similar things. And with Yair, no, I wasn't, I wasn't concerned too much about that. I, I saw a lot of people saying they were worried about that and the fight wasn't going to happen. But, you know, we're all trying to achieve the same thing. So this is such a, you know, important moment for myself. And it just gets me that much closer to my ultimate goal of becoming the undisputed world champion. So there's nothing that was going to stop me. I said, I don't care who I fight, where I fight, when I fight, I will be there. They don't even have to ask me. You know, I actually just signed the contract the other the other week just because we were dealing with some other things. And um, so it's kind of funny. But yeah, no, I was going to be here no matter what. Is that normal to sign the contracts that close to the fight? Or is this just a... The it was, yeah, it was just a, a different thing. And we had, yeah, just some other stuff. But it's kind of funny. Like, I just joke with my wife and friends. I'm like, it's not even official yet, but... But in my eyes, it is. And you did mention your ultimate goal is to be the, the undisputed featherweight champion. Was it important to have this fight on the same card as Alex fighting in the main event? Just so, because like he said, he's going to fight the winner. He has no plans of dropping mm -hmm. that featherweight belt. But assuming you both win, you're on the same timeline. Was it important to be on the same card as him? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really mind. It's just the, uh, it's just the interim title is such a, a to, it's a huge accomplishment. So I, I, I don't think we needed to fight on uh, the same card because, uh, you know, different weights. But, but, it, but it makes for something special because I'm on a historic yeah. event, a historic pay-per-view card, you know, pound for pound number one against pound for pound number two, lightweight versus featherweight champion. Um, and we're co-headlining. It's one of the, the biggest, you know, I, I think fights of the year. And who, who knows? We're going to see how it turns out. But yeah, so it is, it is important to be out here. And, um, but I just have to focus on winning first and then I'll sit back and, and tune in for that fight. Well, I'm sure you visualized the moment of the belt being wrapped around your, your, your waist here in Perth. Are, would you be a fighter like when Justin Gaethje won? He threw the belt on the ground, said this isn't real. Or on the flip side, Dustin Poirier, he treated it like he had won the belt because of the journey that it took to get him there. Yeah, I, I just talked to Bisping and Anik and Cruz in the back about this. And I'm not going to throw it on the ground, but in my eyes, there's only one featherweight champion, and that's Alexander Volkanovsky. So this is more like a number one contender Bell, it's also, it gives me feedback on how good I am and leads me in the right direction to where I want to go. But I have to get through Yair first in order to do so. So I'm solely focused on him at the moment. So speaking of Yair, what do you make of him as an opponent stylistically? Do you like this matchup? He's incredibly dynamic both on mm -hmm. the ground and on his feet. Just what do you make of him as an opponent overall? Yeah, he's a great fighter. You know, he's, he's ranked number two for a reason. He's, he's one of the best in the, re or in the world also. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I just, I focus on myself and, uh, you know, even though I, I have training partners that can't emulate who I'm fighting to the T because everyone's, you know, unique in the, their, their own. Um, and he is so dynamic and elusive and explosive and crafty. You don't know what he's going to throw at you, but you know, I've, I've watched so many, so much film on him. I've, I've brought in, you know, just like my friend and training partner, Andre Feely, he's fought him. He has similar body style. Um, even Slava Claus, he, he's a, you know, my buddy and he's a world champion kickboxer. Um, he's throwing a lot of the, the things that Yair throws, but you know, I'm, 
I'm prepared the best of my ability and I'm just going to go in there and execute my game plan and, uh, you know, capitalize on things that I don't think he'll be able to correct in those, that 10-week camp and I'm going to beat him to the punch. And final question for me, uh, who do you have in the main event? Are you hoping Alex pulls it off, just, you know, represent the featherweights up in, in the new lightweight division? Yeah, it's a it's a tough fight just because they're they're there's both of them are so damn good and um, you know I I just have to win first and then of course I'm pulling for Volt because you know how big that that fight would be and um, yeah it would be it would be massive and uh, you know just a featherweight going up and then becoming the the double champ you know what. Uh, few have only succeeded only a few have even had the opportunity to do it so yeah I, I'm pulling for the underdog I'm always rooting for the underdog and he's he's a massive underdog is, is the biggest hope Josh maybe that just win or lose Alex comes out of that like relatively unscathed you know no serious injuries or anything so we can get this thing going as soon as possible yeah, of course. You know, I, that's with every fighter in the UFC. I, I, I don't wish anything. Even my, my worst enemies, I don't have any in the UFC, but I'm just saying I don't, I don't wish injury or anything on anything bad for any fighter because it's a lot of people don't understand what it takes to do what we're doing and, and what goes into the preparation and everything. So I, even my opponents, when I, I win, I just hope we both come out of there injury free because we both have you know families friends everything it's we're all trying to accomplish the same thing so yeah i, I want them both to come out of there unscathed and injury free you mentioned you have no uh, enemies in fighting who who have been some enemies outside of fighting <laughs> yeah, yeah no i don't i don't have that either but i'm just saying just in general i wouldn't wish my worst enemy i wouldn't want anything bad to happen to them yeah of course and you mentioned one. watching lots of tape on the air and stuff like what's the balance of not focusing so much on what he's going to do in there and like fighting your fight, but also being aware of the danger he presents. Is that like a, a difficult kind of balance to find mentally when you're in there? No, not really. It's uh, it's what I do all the time. You know, it's uh, I, I really just focus on myself. But I watch I watch film on every single opponent that I've I've faced, and um, you know I, I have the most respect for everyone. And then I. I I, I just I, I don't know how good they are. I don't know how fast they are, how hard they hit, all these type of things. I, I think it's like top notch when I'm watching film. And then it sounds crazy, but I, I like to get in there and I, I like to get hit by them and, and see how, how hard do they actually hit, how fast are they. I like to get their timing down. Um, you know, So I, I can't tell you if this is going to be the hardest fight of my life or the easiest fight, but I'll let you know after I win. Oh, there you go. And how much did the last fight like really prep you for this one? I mean, five rounds doesn't get much more like difficult than that. Um, does that give you more confidence coming into this one? No, not at all. You know, I, it, I was a I was a lightweight champion on a regional scene. My my conditioning is top notch. Um, I see a lot of people saying that I wouldn't be able to go five rounds. I could have won another ten rounds. That that the pace of that fight that I had last was so. It was just so slow. Like I, I don't know. I just didn't have any sense of urgency um, to go in for the for the kill, just because I, I thought I was up. But I, I know I've seen a lot of what other people think. But you know, I just I, I also feel like when I fight someone, and I did this in wrestling my whole career as well. Um, I just kind of and my, and my coaches tell me like, not that I stoop to anyone's level, or I just fight it like this consistent pace. Um, the better the the opponent, the better the fighter, the wrestler, I rise to the occasion and they bring out the best in me. So I'm hoping I get the best Yair Rodriguez and it'll bring out the best in me and, and I'll show you guys how great I am. The, you mentioned the last fight and like kind of the, the talk around the decision. Was that difficult for you at all to like get over in the aftermath or once you knew you were getting this fight, it's like, well, it doesn't really matter? No, there's no, I won. Like it's yeah. a, I, I see like a win's a win, you know. And, and the thing that I see with people saying about title fights, oh, saying that possibly didn't deserve it because of a close fight. W when you play a sport, you win. Like, say if you're in the, the NBA, the, the Western Conference Finals, if they win in overtime by one point, did they not get to go to the NBA Finals because it was a close game? No, they won. The winner advanced. That's how things happen even in – you know any type of bracket situation you win you move on it doesn't it doesn't matter i'm trying to finish the fight every chance i get i'm i'm definitely not trying to let it go to the scorecards you know but it's just a win's a win and that's what happened 
You know, is that kind of maybe the, the negative double standard of MMA fans a little bit? They want this meritocracy, and, you know, but it yeah. seems like it's selective on who they want it for. I guess, and it, it does, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, so it really doesn't affect me. Look where I am. There you go. Hey, Josh, just uh, quickly, what do you think of Alex daring to be great and taking on this challenge of Islam? I think it's great. You know, he, he's earned it. You know, it, a lot of times when they were talking about um, he may not be able to go up or possibly Dana didn't want him to or, or whatnot, it's like he's undefeated in the UFC, the featherweight champion. He's beat some of the legends and goats of the division, pound for pound number one. He's earned it. Let the guy do whatever the hell he wants. And being here with him on the same card, have you run into him yet? Have you had any interactions with Alex? Have you had a chance to wish him luck or tell him, hey, this could be next? Yeah. No, no, I haven't seen him this trip. You know, I've seen his coaches, great, great coaches, great teammates. Um, yeah, Volkanovski is a great guy. I, I met him down in Rio when he fought Jose Aldo. And, uh, yeah, but, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to running into him and, and wishing him luck. And Josh, is, uh, is there any extra pressure with Volk on the card? to almost impress him or show what you can do, get your Yari out early? No, no, I'm just going to go win. You know, I, I don't have to um, make statements. I don't have to impress anyone. I just, I just have to win. And uh, so there's no, no added pressure or anything on me, even though there is so much on the line. Um, it's just another fight, another opponent in front of me. And, um, yeah, it's like I'm, I'm just how I always am, just calm, cool, and relaxed. So... Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to Sunday afternoon, though. <laughs> is that is fighting on a Sunday going to feel any different for you? Is that, have you, is that come into your training at all? Um, no, I, I don't think it's going to affect me or bother me at all. Um, I, I've been training around, you know, the afternoons, just in general back home, and we came out here early, acclimated. Um, I, I think I'm actually going to like it more, you know, just because – when we fight at night and we're, say we're in Vegas or in the States and, you know, later in the card and we're, we're fighting at like nine or beyond, I'm, I'm super tired, you know, so I'm just like backstage, like laying on the mats, trying to take a, take a nap. And then it's like, I got to, they're like, you're up next. I'm like, shit. Okay. I, I got to somewhat pump myself up. And, uh, it was there any specific reason you chose champions gym to, to get ready at? Yeah, so one of our, our good friends, Tuss, she's, she's actually from Perth, and um, Champions Gym, it's, it's her brother. Her older brother owns those gyms, and so they, they're nothing but welcoming and, and showed us so much hospitality, and uh, we're going to go to her father's gym this afternoon. Um, he owns a, a Muay Thai gym in, in Perth, and, and he's, he brought Muay Thai to Australia. That's why it's here. Awesome. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Josh, uh, two quick more, uh, two more quick ones. Uh, on Instagram, you wrote uh, when Wall decides to sponsor your balls for this fight. So, what exactly? How did that sponsorship come about? Yeah, so I think it's just uh, you know, you guys know Wall. Like I, I use their products forever. I've used the balding clippers, and they came out with Wall Manscaper. So it's a direct competitor with Manscape, and I think just playing off of the uh, just the, the whole thing. I they want me to be the face of that, and. Uh, you know, it's we're going down under, below the belt type of things. It, it couldn't uh, be any better. So it's it's been nothing but amazing. Wall has been like welcoming, and I, I did all those uh, little shoots with them and commercials, and, and that was fun. And it's just, I don't know, it's just we're just having a good time. And um, you guys can go to joshemmett.com if you guys want to get yourself one. So that, that copy that you used on Instagram, Sponsor My Balls, that was your idea, and that wasn't Wall coming to you and be like, hey, what do you think of this? No, it wasn't my idea. It was, I, I can't take the credit for that, but it was definitely all them. And then finally, uh, what do you make of the two uh, featherweight fights announced between Arnold Allen, Max Holloway, and um, the, the other one? Is I, uh, that one. That one's the big one, obviously. Yeah, no, I, I think it's going to be a great fight, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I'm excited for it. You know, I'm a, I'm a, a fight fan. That's kind of what got me into the sport back in the day when I was back in 99. Um, you guys can do the math how old I am, but I was uh, watching the pay-per-view events back then when there was only a few a year, and uh, I'm, I'm a fan of the sport. I watch every card if I can. Okay. How you going, Josh? Great. 
Um, just going back to the end of the Max Holloway Volkanovsky trilogy, there was three names kind of thrown around in contention for who's going to fight next, yourself among them. With this fight, it probably could have gone the other way where Alan was fighting Rodriguez instead. How would you have felt if that had gone? Would you have felt cheated? Or um, then knowing that he got the Max Holloway fight, would you have kind of been, oh, it kind of worked out in the end sort of thing? Um, no, I, I thought I was like the clear choice. You know, if you look at my win record, uh, the streak I'm on, the, the actual opponents I beat in the top 10, top 5, I thought for sure I was next. Um, you know, and then I know Allen and Yair were thrown in the mix, and, you know, it is kind of what it is. So I, I, I don't really <laughs> – who knows what would have happened. I guess it, it would have have to happen a different way for me to, to feel any type of emotion. Thank you. Mm -hmm.